Hi there everyone, welcome back to another gear review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Assaulter's gun belt from the first bit. Picked this up a little while ago. What I'm going to do going to go through the, uh, the construction of it, how it's put together, what makes it a good belt. So we've got our gun belt down on the table here and uh, we'll crack straight into the, the main construction material they've used. Now this is a, a one and three quarter, 1.75 inch thickness belt. You tend to find with these type of uh, riggers belts, duty belts, that you will have either a one and a half, a one and three quarters, or a two inch. And the problem with the two is that it can be too wide for a lot of belt loops, and with a one and a half, you lose a bit of strength, a bit of rigidity. So first bit we've gone in that middle ground, a nice uh, sort of all round option. The, the webbing itself, you've got two layers to it, as you can see there. And it's very reminiscent of this sort of webbing material that you see on uh, scuba gear. Quite similar to some of the stuff I've seen on, on parachute rigs I've jumped. Uh, you know, it, to, suffice to say this stuff is nigh on unbreakable. You, like, no matter how much strength, how much force you were to put in that sort of direction, trying to pull it apart while you were wearing it, or however you might try and break it or test it, you're going to need... I'm pretty sure you could hook up a couple of trucks onto uh, onto either end of this belt and try and pull it apart and I don't think they would manage to break it to be honest. This webbing, especially having the two layers, it's uh, it's incredibly strong nylon of course, um, ridiculously tough stuff. Now on the inside what they've done, you'll notice I said the two layers before, what there is, there is a plastic stiffening section in there, you see, you see where it starts all nicely is sewn on the inside, goes all the way around the belt, back to the front again, and there's the other end of it. What that's giving you is, if it was just a webbing, this, this would probably crumple quite easily when you put pouches etc onto it, but it gives it a lot of, when you actually try and crush it like that, it's just uh, not going anywhere. I mean, you know, it can it can be folded slightly, if you, like if I really put on, you know, a lot of strength into it, you can bend it but uh, the thing I've found is with the belts the tougher they make them in this in the in in that dimension the, the less flexible they are when it comes to actually wearing them and it can make them really really uncomfortable uh, I, I've tried a an Aries gear belt ran that in a, in a Falcon Ops carbine class and I didn't find it comfortable personally. I know they're popular, but it just it didn't conform to the shape of my actual waist, and I, I felt found it really not that great in that sense. So the first spear one, really good in, in that uh, it's got a lot of flex in this dimension here where you want it. So it's actually going to fit you correctly. But with that plastic, two layers of webbing, lots of stitching. We might as well talk about the stitching. Hopefully, the camera. I mean, you can see there. That's what. Uh, there's at least three to four passes with the sewing machine they've done on that end here where uh, the female section of the Cobra buckle is locked in and then you've got stitching along the top, a little row here in the centre, I think there's actually two, two down the centre, one there and then one at the bottom, loads of stitching and that, and that continues all the way throughout the length of the belt and through the air. Uh, the adjustment section here. On the inside you've got velcro loop, nice soft stuff. I'm not sure if it's meant to interface with something, hopefully if someone, if anyone knows out there. I've seen belts with velcro on the outside to designed to integrate with some sort of a molly system. I'm not sure what the loop on the inside of here does. I know this belt is designed to integrate with the, the first bit ogre uh, vest. I'm not sure if that has something to do with it. But it does add a little bit of comfort. It has to be said, it's fairly nice paddy stuff. And you, you certainly wouldn't want Velcro hook because that's really scratchy and it would rip your trousers up and just uh, give you a bad day, basically. So look at the buckle because this is quite a big feature. There's a lot of these a lot of these uh, similar webbing belts out on the market and when it comes to the buckle as you see here Osteal pin Cobra buckle this is what you want guys there is there is nothing else on the market I know of that is as high quality and strong as these buckles when it comes to this sort of application you see these on uh, on all sorts of uh, climbing and rescue equipment as I mentioned you'll see them on just any sort of extreme sports kit 
you're gonna where you need a, some sort of a, a buckle like this you're gonna see these brand certainly if it's the if it's quality kit because these are absolutely nails I'm not sure the main alloy they use but it's got a nice it's got a nice uh, coating to it it's quite it seems fairly resilient from what I've seen so far these sections the actual release mechanism are brass pinned through to hold them in they look to be peened over so they're not going anywhere these pins and the actual I've had a look on the Austria Alpen website I'm not sure what this 9 kilonewton reading here is um, but according to the website it's this one at the top you want to pay attention to when combined with the correct webbing as this belt is this buckle will give you 18,000 newtons of braking strength before this uh, this whole assembly or actually to break apart on it and that is essentially unbreakable as far as any application any situation I can really think of it's just not going to break on you it simply isn't um, these, uh, this is the one side adjustable version of the Cobra which is actually better and like the, obviously the more components you add the, the more strength you lose so this side there isn't an adjustable bar in here it's just solid buckle and then to facilitate actually adding belt mounted pouches this side the, the male portion can come away to do that you take uh, you've got your velcro here that undoes this is your adjustment so when you want to make the belt longer or shorter you've got about a good four inches or so maybe more of adjustment just from that this plain section here where the buckle can adjust and then when you want to add pouches onto the belt you can totally remove this male section slide your pouches on down here and then position them wherever you want to on the belt itself when you're done get that like so back through you could actually just put it like that and we can thread it back again really nice positive you know when it's locked you know when it's unlocked um, another good thing about this buckle is it will never even if you undo one side it will still not you know that's that's certainly my maximum <coughs> that's uh, that is not undoing even when you undo one portion of the actual locking mechanism that's the other side not going anywhere and as soon as you the, that pressure releases they both click back into place again there we have it that's our that's our construction as I am uh, I'm not at all surprised to find with uh, any first beer product it is top of the line yet again this you know every every stitch every fabric choice every portion of this belt it's as good as you get so there we go so there we have it that is the uh, construction assembly of the assaulters gun belt really nice piece of kit if you want to pick one up I will put a link to the first beer web store uh, down in the description box they are available in the, uh, the car key that you see here you get them in black and you get them multi-cam as well it costs a couple of extra dollars a wide range of sizes available it covers all the way from a 28 to a 44 inch waist so be a model there to fit you and if you want to keep up to date on the uh, videos I put up here on the channel I've got a Facebook page again I'll put a link in the description below and uh, thanks for watching guys, appreciate all the thumbs up, all the subs and shares and that good stuff, it, it helps out a lot and I appreciate everyone out there that does it and I'll see you next time.